podcasting. So uh, here we are again and um, for the second time. And yeah, we're very happy to be here because I'm here together with Sarah. Mm -hmm. She's an artist, an entrepreneur, totally aligned with quantum thinking. And I met her just by coincidence here on this island when I came to Trinidad, Tobago. And yeah, we felt directly that we had this definitely yeah, very this, common ideas, very yeah. common, um, you know, desires for how we want things to play out in the realm of profession, uh, how we want to contribute to society, how we feel like uh, artists should be more empowered, and uh, how we as everybody is an artist, everybody is a creator, everybody is creating some version of their best self. And how does this affect us all? Uh, we're all on a different journey. And how do we tap into this imaginative realm and really bridge it more with what we're met with in the day-to-day -day life, you know? Yeah, and, and um, yeah, you made this beautiful painting, which you can also see on the flyer for this live broadcast. And it's a painting which is not finished. So that's quite yeah difficult for an artist to do something like that so how do you announce something which is not finished but it's also yeah. very symbolic for what we do in life and how did it feel for you to publish it even um, not totally perfect like unfinished work it's quite scary but you really really helped uh, um, they, you know help me that I would be ready for it and that I would really understand the importance of how it can help people because you know when we try to control things that's good too um, but it's also good to show things I mean the painting is not finished so it's a it's a it's not where I want it to be um, but it it's it will never look the same way it looks right now and I felt like that was special when you know Brioni told me she said I think you should show it. I think you should, because, you know, we were going back and forth as to which one we will go with. And we felt really, really compelled that this one was very symbolic of what we will talk about today. And I'm really happy that she has, you know, been able to really bring that point home for us so that we can see this piece of painting, this piece of artwork as a sort of analogy or a symbol of the way we all are and the way we all want to make things in a grand scheme you know, that we all have a work in progress of a project that we were aspiring for it to get to a particular place. Yeah, I think that everybody had his dream in life. Yeah. And the nice thing about the dream is that it's never perfect, you know? You always have to recreate it because at a certain moment you reach something and then you say, oh, I want new dreams or maybe I don't want what I wanted and I want to revise that. So and our life is like one artwork and it's Absolutely. never finished and we always can recreate reform it and that's also um yeah a message we have for today is that in life everything is finished and you can always redesign it reform it because especially now in covid times you know you had this dream you had this idea about how you would create your artwork in life like your life how it should be and then COVID came, comes and everything becomes different. And maybe you experience problems in your business, in your job. And even if you didn't experience any prob problems in that, you, you, you certainly experience problems in traveling, in Absolutely. doing the things you normally do, yeah. in, uh, in connecting with people. Maybe you're even connecting online more, more less offline. And yeah, it has for everybody an impact and also what you see in the news, it had an influence on you. And so yeah. that is so important that that's the moment for redesigning. That's the moment. I don't look a lot at the news. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me too. But that's one of the secrets we do for, um, for creating the life you desire, creating uh, that what you want to achieve. What is very important is that you feed yourself with things which helps you towards your goal. So if you feed yourself constantly with information, which is not really helping you forward, because, and, 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 and maybe you ask me then, yeah, but that's reality, we have to look at it. Yeah, but do you have to look at it every moment in the day and, and remember Absolutely it? Because <laughs> there's so much happening, you know? 
because I could look at the news and then hear that something has happened somewhere on these islands. But you know, at the same time, 50 other things or, or 100 million things other are happening, which is also worth mentioning, but it is just not in the news, so it's not in your focus at that moment. So it's so important what you want to have in your focus and that you hold is in your focus, because every thought crystallizes itself in reality. So every thought you have, that's quite confronting, you know, to know that every thought you have at a certain moment, it will crystallize in reality and it will come to you in a kind of people who you are meeting and then this thought will be crystallized. Let's say that um, you, you think that people don't like you and that uh, maybe people don't like your artwork. I will just give a, an example here. Some people <laughs> don't like my artwork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but let's say that you're very worried about that, yeah. that they don't like, and constantly you're in your mind thinking, oh, they don't, oh, maybe that person don't like my painting. Oh, maybe that person don't like my painting. You know what will happen? You will meet people who really will say, yeah, your artwork, I really don't like it. But it's just because you're focused on it. But the moment you start reimagining that every time there's like this thought which goes on, oh, people don't like my artwork. And then you recreate in your mind this idea of, uh, you say, oh, how would it feel if people say, yeah, what a wonderful painting, what wonderful thing you do. Then what happens is that something changes in you. You are more loving. You are more like welcoming the world into your life. And then what happens? You will meet so many people who really like your artwork. That's, that's true. That's the crazy thing about reality and manifesting. Yeah. For me, um, you know, I have, a p I have so many examples of, you know, things that you're talking about. And, you know, it, it, it all comes down for me to you're on a spectrum of love and fear, all right? And when we talk about how the media influences our frequencies, we're talking about being on a spectrum of love and fear. And where do we want to be on that spectrum? Do we want to be in a place where we're inhibited by this fear? Or do we want to be motivated by fear? And motivated to do what? You know, so, we really just have to be intentional about the way we go about absorbing information. When people, you know, in each of my paintings, um, you know, I tell people all the time that I have put a special message into my paintings. I've put a special energy into my paintings. And so it's not just what meets the eye. So even if you don't like the colors, um, once I start talking about the piece, you know, and I really just let go because as an artist, you must let go. And even just as a person creating anything, any sort of business project, venture, anything you create, there's a point where you let go and you let the consumer or the audience really perceive what they want and you just let go, you know? And it's so fascinating the way people, I am, I am always, I was really, really shy to show my work in the beginning because I felt like I put so much energy into it that I would want to be private about it, how I go about sharing it, who I share it with, how I share it and the way it's shared and so on. So it comes down to love and fear and how we perceive information, how we're, how we're uh, managing stimuli that we're faced with on a daily basis. If it's a piece of art or is it um, a piece of, it's a, is it an audio piece, is it music? Or is it like, um, you know, some uh, newspaper article? Or is it like a headline of a newspaper? So we have to decide, okay, are we going to let this message in? You know, uh, are, we, are we willing to go deeper into this message? And we have to want to really find out the energy that that thing is overlaid with. So often the news is overlaid with fear. Just an example, sometimes the news is overlaid with fear. So you know immediately, at least for the both of us, that we would not go looking for more of that energy. Um, and so we would gravitate more to things that, you know, have to do with substance and, you know, creative stuff, you know, like just being able to really tap into things that inspire you is, is the bottom line here, you know? And you can touch more on it because, I mean, 
you know, I can talk about it in terms of painting, but I'm sure you have examples in terms of how you go about um, production because I've heard, I've heard her music and her music is stunning. <laughs> Thank Hello. you. Uh, we're still in the broadcast. Okay. <laughs> Some people are uh, visiting, so, because uh, we have uh, soon here a party. Um, it's a kind of celebration about, uh, quant it's an exploration about quantum thinking and how to apply it in your life. So several people of the island will um, join us, yes. join us on uh, this event. I also have a special guest here for today. It's also for you. Uh, yeah, I, I will um, call Roy because uh, he also has some beautiful ideas about sure. quantum thinking and I just have to... <laughs> Sorry about that. So let's see if we can call him in. <coughs> you hear the sounds? <laughs> Hello, Roy. You can see me. Oh, wait, I will add you to the call. Yes, Roy, we have a little, we, it's, it's even not Caribbean delay, you know, because 15 minutes, I said it would be 15 minutes in advance. We had a technical uh, problem with the live broadcast, so uh, that's why we're 15 minutes in delay. But um, normally for Caribbean style, we're really too early, you know? <laughs> I'm Caribbean, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think the great thing of being Caribbean is that you relax, you don't get stressed. Exactly. All the time, right? I don't know why people are so always stressed. Let's about see that. how we do it. We have to be a little bit closer. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> then we have the three of us. <laughs> wow, I'm so honored to be in the presence of both of you. You're you know, you're so in contrast with each other, which <laughs> <laughs> is it's the beauty to, to, to be seen. And I was listening in on your conversation, and I just want to add a little piece, because a lot of people are afraid of the negative. You see, negative is part of life. We have, let's say, on one side light, and the other side we're shadows. And when we welcome the shadows, we embrace them, we take away the fear. I think the big, biggest fear in our life comes down to rejection. So when we embrace rejection as part of being, you know, but also part, like Nietzsche said, what doesn't kill me makes me strong. And as long as it doesn't affect us personally, so we allow it to come in, into our weak parts, that's where we get triggered. And I think that it, it is impossible that everyone will like even your most brilliant ideas. Let's say six hour, for example, your best picture, of which you're so much passion and love you put into it. When you look at it, you only see beauty. And many people see beauty, but there must be a few people out there who just don't like your picture, right? It's just what is. And it could be one call the things uh, and, and whatever maybe the energy is not right for them in this moment so if we start taking these things personal and and here's my point when you've been visible as me for so long you will have to accept that not everyone will find you as brilliant as you think you are i know i'm brilliant but not everybody will agree with that and we need to make peace with that and i think in in the topic we're talking about quantum thinking in order for us to become the best version of ourselves it doesn't mean that in the end everybody will like us actually maybe even there are more people will not like us and the main reason for me is that where we were before we attracted the people that we had before in our lives it could be even a partner or friends they all came because we have a certain frequency so the moment we change we mature become wiser more loving more ourselves some people will just don't like that because they're accustomed to us before so my, my my most important thing i've learned is when i change i will lose people but the people who come instead of the people i lose will be the ones who resonate with who i am in the now 
And and I think everybody needs to accept that because otherwise you'll be uh, suffering in a lot of pain because you want that, you are craving that approval so much. We will get enough approval, but not always from the people that we want to. And if we take this to business, and I've not seen your work yet, Sarah, but you know, if I would look at it, I would just find the frequencies that resonate with me. And some will resonate more, some will resonate less. It could be even that at some point, you may be in a certain mood. Let, let's take an example, something happened to you and you're making a, a, a let's say a painting, your mood, what's happening to you will reflect in that painting. Does this make sense? Is the same thing with music. I was so attracted by a song of Carlos Santana when I was depressed and when I met him, he told me they made that music when he was depressed. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so we, we always resonate with frequencies. So for me, it's not if someone likes it or not. The better, bigger question is, do they resonate with that, what I'm presenting in this moment or not? And, and some people not resonate now, they'll resonate later. It all depends because everything is changing very quickly. The only thing I, I'm wishing for in quantum is if I could teleport myself, I would teleport myself to your party. <laughs> You're welcome to teleport. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're it's living here. here. Uh, it's a beautiful place. We're living here uh, just at the seaside. So we will mm. do some quantum thinking with the waves in the background. And of course that helps too. But even if you don't have that, so mm. you can do so much with your life, you know, and it's very special that um, I, came here because that was also like thanks to the whole covid and and, and and corona situation i had to create a business which was online i i from desperation and from just like being bored because i was constantly at home and during lockdown i i connected with a lot of online platforms and uh, also a diaspora meeting where they created a lot of um, uh, projects for Africa so I met so many people worldwide and also my my partner where I live now here in Trinidad with in Tobago and then you see oh and, 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 and in the beginning I thought oh but I didn't imagine that and then I was thinking is that really true didn't I imagine that because you were asking me that Roy weren't you so how did you and then I have to be sure that I visualized I visualize like living at the seaside and walking with my partner next to the seaside and um, to the in, in, at the beach. I visualize too that I would have all the all the time and all the to be creative without stress and just having the perfect nature environment. So it's not really true that I did not visualize that. And what does that mean? How, how do you apply visualization? So if you want to create something in your life, how, when, how do you apply that? Well, I learned visualization through arts. And so uh, meditation for me is my, my practice, my art practice. And it's been around since I was a kid. And, um, you know, visualization is basically, um, we were talking earlier about uh, frequency. And mm -hmm. so the reason why my paintings are you know such you know uh, connected to the way I, I i go about planning and putting intention in things is because i do put intention in my paintings so you know visualization is a process for me and i think um you know you touched on a very interesting point which is frequency and when you talk about frequency if you truly can summarize the energetic signature of a frequency you know what that frequent frequency feels like, you know what shapes and rhythms and colors it would feel like and look like, and you know the feeling it's generating for you, but you just want to share it. Uh, mm -hmm. Visualization is similar to, like this for me, so that I try to create a frequency in my paintings, and it stops when I know that the painting is finished and I'm satisfied with matching the frequency that I'm, I have on the inside to what I see on the outside. And um, sometimes, if my frequency is not at the place where it needs to be in creating this piece, then I am not allowed to really work on the piece until I feel as though it is the time that the frequency meshes with 
the particular stage of progress. And so it really is an interesting topic, I mean, frequency, because if you really think about visualization and manifestation on the whole, it really boils down to frequency. And, you know, on my blog, I wrote a bit of an article exploring about how do you really come to the underlying intention of a frequency. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I came into this uh, dilemma where I'm like, I'm not so sure for everybody, you know, because it's a very complex thing and you have to really define all the variables. You have to mm -hmm. define like, you know, uh, what is the thing that you're creating? Why? And um, for whom? And what is the underlying intention? What was the purpose mm -hmm. it was created? And what do you want to accomplish? What does that mean for you when it's, when it's met? And, um, you know, so it's the same way we live life, really. We are all creators and we're really just using the same process of, you know, when a woman walks into a house and she's like, oh my gosh, this does not match what I wanted. It's the frequency, right? She's like, no, no, this is not the one. <laughs> I have to go looking again on the market because this is not matching the frequency because she would have created inside of her a dream of where she would call her home and you know that would allow her to be the full energy of who she should be and as long as she uh, does not find that place she's not she's not going to find her home until she finds that place and luckily for a lot of us women we help each other build our, our dream homes so some of us choose certain designers and some of us choose certain um property realists and we trust these people because they they know the frequency and it's sort of this unspoken connection that we have that we haven't really teased out in detail but it goes back into how intelligent we are and how, how much we communicate with each other even non-verbally um, and that's why physical contact is so important it's a running theme this year and last year because you know you're, <laughs> you're just literally you're not able to meet with you with your favorite people in person because you're exchanging so much energy and thoughts when you're in the same room and you're bridging ideas and frequencies you know that you can you can literally and but you see last year is as as Brioni was saying beautifully earlier about how you know it's about what do we create because this is a, a major opportunity for the world to rally um you know adjust and re, you know redesign things because truly the world that we want we can create it now you know mm -hmm. we have a time of a hiatus it's a reflection so we get to decide well okay i want to be more creative moving into the new world i want to contribute more to women or well, for me particularly i want to help you know encourage a lot of women ask me my email they're like how do i tap into this creative energy i'm like you have it just open the door you know maybe your door is closed and maybe you just need to sit with yourself a little bit and really just realize that we are all reflections of one another wow thank you so much for sharing that so beautiful to hear that for you and and what's so important about the frequencies that most people don't realize that we all are like radio senders and receivers we're sending out constantly and and what you said also about meditation when when we go inside we're switching off looking outside so we're not, we don't get all this information and then once we calm down then the whole universe is waiting for you and most people are too busy running around doing their thing and then they come to you oh, can you show me how to do it well it's it is slow down <laughs> take your time yeah. and it's so beautiful because i just got an article that scientific research has showed that people who visualize how they age and how they stay healthy in general live seven and a half years longer than the people who don't visualize it this is science right here and today I got another article with where they say to, when people start to walk in nature for leisure, just for fun, they are three times more creative than when they don't do it. So it's not even in meditation. It could be walking in nature, it could be taking a shower, swimming in the ocean. When we are relaxed, that's when we are connected to everything. And then, you know, and you as an artist have learned how to connect for what you're doing. And me, in my work, I've learned how to connect for what I'm doing. And when I teach a cancer patients how to visualize to be healthy, the chances of recovery are much greater 
if they just keep doing what you're doing. So, and it's so beautiful to see that this applies to so many different fields. What we do know about the brain on our own research is that the right side of the brain, which a lot of people call the creative brain, is not as creative people think it is. It is more the connecting brain. It connects us to the field. So most of our ideas are already in the field. And so by, by tapping into the field, then uh, we, we get to what uh, we're calling our quantum thinking. But truly honest, quantum thinking doesn't exist. It is more connecting to the information and processing that information. And that's the quantum thinking. But first, it's the connection. And I think, you know, Brioni as a musician, singer, and you as an artist, you naturally do that. I had to learn, okay? <laughs> I had to really learn because it's not a natural thing for me to do. And when I started with visualization, I always tell people it was a black and white TV, like the old ones with no remote control. And you know, sometimes it goes and it becomes like this white noise. But with training and, and, and just keep doing it, we start getting more information, maybe not always visual, it could be a feeling, intuition, it could be knowing, or if you're more creative like an artist, it could be colors, it could be music. One of the most important things that Carlos Santana told me, he said, none of the lyrics, none of the music are mine. I get it. And he said, I get it from angels. And what he does, he smokes his, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> he smokes his stuff that relaxes him. And then all the information comes to him. And he shared with me some music that he doesn't put on the market because it's too spiritual. So he gets a lot of music that's more angelic and he just give it to friends. He doesn't sell it because he said, this is the music I cannot sell. And then, but they give me also the music I can sell. So and that's so beautiful to hear it from, from an artist, how they get the information. And, it's, and that's why it also for me, it's so, lovely to see how you do it because each of us will make or find our own way to create that that field of quantum. I think the general message is how do we connect to the field and I think the answer is simple. We need to slow down, <laughs> make time for it. I think that would be the most yeah, important and, message. And, yeah, and, and believe in the power of your imagination because there it all <laughs> starts. Everything whatever is created in life is through, okay. through imagine, imagination. And, mm -hmm. and that's like the seed where the plant can grow with a, to, to a tree and, and, and so whatever, don't underestimate how important that is because every thought can crystallize itself in reality or will crystallize itself, that's even more scary, will yeah. crystallize itself in reality and your life, that's like an artwork, so you just see it like that. And in the beginning, I was also a bit scared with my life, so I had a certain idea about life and then how I achieve, how I would achieve my goals. And if I wouldn't achieve it that way, my life would be lost, you know? Yeah. I, I, would, I, I was just a failure. But you know, of course, that you only have from, from childhood, because there's no possibility that you can be a failure in life, because you're the creator, you are just pure imagination, and whatever you choose to imagine, you can create, that's the game in life. So, and every thought you have is crystallizing itself, and is a process of learning, that the more you get in this frequency what Roy and Sarah were mentioning, the more you create that frequency around you so you constantly feel it and you focus on it and even your thoughts are just going in that frequency. That's why we also talked about the news, that's also good. Very important just not to let you constantly be influenced by other sources. Is it the news? Is it your mother-in-law? Is it whatever who is around you who is saying some things which is not matching your goals? It's okay, they can be there, but it's in you that you have to reframe that ideas about how you can create your life. So it, that's so important that you um, uh, see your life as that artwork. It can infinite, in infinite ways be changed again. The dreams, I think Roy can, can 
<laughs> testify for that one that dreams do change <laughs> you had many plans and dreams and always had to be creative in in reimagining it creating new dreams going towards that new dreams and then recreating it and that's because we can see we are the artists every person is an artist of his life and if you mm. see it that way it creates much more freedom much more um yeah much more territory yeah threshold for you to explore yep. so, so that's not it's not your life is not such a way that oh if i do it this way then i i do it well i had something about like i had to have a spiritual goal and i have to do that very pure and then i would reach my goal and if i would like step aside then i would be like deemed or whatever <laughs> and at a certain moment i thought no then i feel no your life is is just an artwork and you're never deemed you're always the the creative source you're always the power of imagination and whatever you choose for life you can always restart again reframe again and just match and and make sure that your frequency uh, lifts up and becomes that what you want to achieve Roy, you mentioned nature and I think that we should talk a little bit more about that because you also mentioned frequency and when you really think about aligning yourself with your true alignment, nature is already in alignment with itself and it is just in its element. And the power that nature has on us is that it helps align us because we're in an environment that is of a certain frequency. And mm -hmm. so when, when we artists tend to, or people in general, tend to go to nature for inspiration, we're trying to get a set, we're trying to get a frequency, a vibe going. And this vibe will take us through the creation process. And whether it be that we stay in this environment, um, you, know, you know, but I'm curious about you because how would you have felt uh, that nature impacts you as a person in terms of the, the frequencies and the deeper uh, desires and better selves that you want to make out of your, your soul's expression. How has nature impacted the way you think? Wow. <laughs> First of all, I was uh, living as, as a kid on an island, Aruba, and I have this connection with the sea. So I have this strong connection with the sea. It calms me down, but, and, and some people may think I'm crazy, but I think I'm crazy too, so it's not a problem. <laughs> I believe I can talk to the sea. I, and I have this hallucination that sometimes that the sea responds to my thoughts, right? I have many of these uh, experiences. When I was living in California, there was one tree. We were living in nature. When it sat down under the tree, I would get specific ideas. They, I would get awesome ideas. I have to do something for children. I have to write this book. So. Now, is it my hallucination or not? I don't know. But here's my biggest experience happened last year when I went to the Amazon. And I was invited there by uh, a shaman, uh, actually a woman. And she did a ritual with me to connect me with, to the Amazon. And at some point, this connection was so strong. My desire was to find an herb to cure uh, diabetes. And at some point, I was just taken over by whatever you want to call it, the spirit of the Amazon, whatever it is. And I'm led to specific plans that have an impact on diabetes, knowing nothing about this part of the Amazon. And there was one plant in particular that I was drawn towards to, and I asked my guide, what is this plant? And he said, it's a plant we use for people with diabetes. Now, how is it possible? from all the fauna in the Amazon that I'm guided to that. So, and everybody, if they would just open themselves up to get out of the crazy mind, nature is something to offer for us all. So for example, my daughter, she's great in connecting to the fairy world, right? When she was younger and she would point that there's a fairy there. And then we were looking, we see no fairies, <laughs> but she would see them, she would talk to them. So when we're still young and we're not blocked by all our way of thinking, these connections are, are more simple. And, and then when we are, you know, living our lives in all of that. So 
For example, when I was living in California, we had the tree huggers, and everybody was tell, tell, saying the people hugging trees are crazy. I in the beginning too, until I hugged a tree. And then I really felt something. And the first time I jumped back because I think, no, 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 this is not possible. So, but there is a wisdom in trees that when we tap into it, that is so peaceful, but also so wise. And we, we as intelligent beings believe that certain consciousnesses don't have intelligence, but the whole nature is a miracle. We are miracles. And when we connect miracle to miracle, new miracles happen. And basically that's what we're talking about, about the quantum. Is the quantum was not understood for so long, but now step for step, we can explain more things, what is really happening. And, and when you ask me about nature, I mean, I, there's so many stories I can tell, but the truth is that everyone will have their own experience. You will have a different experience than me, but you have this because we all are resonating with different parts of nature and living now in the mountains while my heart wants to live, for example, where you guys are living <laughs> on the, the ocean. It took me a little bit of time to reconnect to the mountain energy, which I didn't know at all. And now that's adding also another element to my whole being and I'm enjoying the mountains now. And where I come from is flat. We didn't have any mountains to speak of. So it was just, you know, we had some cactus and the ocean. Those were the two things. And I never hugged the cactus for obvious reasons. So I never connected to them. But I think everybody needs to just to make these little steps to sit down under an old tree and just see what happens without expectations, without anything, and just connect and allow it to connect to you. And sooner or later, if you keep doing that, you will experience something that is so beautiful that you never want to miss it again in your life. And then that, that's my story on connection with nature. So thank you for asking that. It's really brings up a lot of stuff in me. <laughs> yeah, I can connect with that because every, I think every fairy tale I wrote for children, for adults, every song I wrote, that was all because for me, it's very easy to like, become one with something in nature and then just write a story or a song about it and there's just that pops in in a in in a second you know it's just that and it's it's there I, i'm not really thinking about it it's just like i'm just seeing that tree and a story emerges and mm -hmm. if i i could do that constantly but i'm not doing that constantly because <laughs> then i'm only busy with that <laughs> kind of stuff but yes uh, nature everything is frequency and you can just like connect with it and then just embody it and 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 and, and ride with it and that's the same with like if we just keep it because i think we almost have to finish beca before our party uh, starts <laughs> but anyway everybody comes here a few hours later because it's uh, in caribbean style um then yeah, well, if you bring this to your life, what you do is actually you create yourself in such a frequency, a frequency that matches what you want to achieve. So you make sure that you as a person already become mm -hmm. what matches with the future. And that is what your imagination can do. And really not the imagination like I'm pushing an idea in my head and it has to be like stubborn like that. No, it's really the imagination which you have like when you surrender just before you go to sleep or when you relax or when you, that's the imagination where you totally like can feel it, can sense it and you feel yourself in this divine connection or divine frequency that's where your imagination does its work and that's why it's so important that's why we also say don't look constantly at the news don't listen constantly to people who are saying things which doesn't help you forward because the point is that doesn't bring you in that frequency where your imagination can create and, and, and that's our responsibility to bring us in that state where whatever we imagine that this creates what we want to achieve in life. And that's, I think, the most important 
lesson. There is many lessons in our talk today. I think yeah, we can make some I can Imagine that I'm at the party. So don't worry. You'll yeah. see a ghost walking around. <laughs> we'll make some shots and uh, we'll pleasure. publish it so you can enjoy. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you ladies for having me. It's been a real, real pleasure. It only makes me want to come faster to speed <laughs> that <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It's nice having you. Pleasure. Um, nice to get to know you, Sarah. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Likewise. All right. All right. See you guys. Enjoy your party. <laughs> thank you all Bye. for listening. Thank you for being here. You said you're part of this frequency field. So you can create tonight's already now at this moment everybody has nature around him it's not possible that you don't have this sparkle of nature around you even if you're living on an apartment you can look at the sky there is air and you can have plants <laughs> on your balcony yeah <laughs> so um enjoy your day and uh, we will be back soon bye, bye, bye.